we've heard some great speakers right now, some great success stories. Um, I just want to talk about more like some of the, uh, the, the craziest failures that I've you know, kept stumbling over and stumbling over and stumbling over. And I just keep feeling that as entrepreneurs, really, by definition, it seems like everybody else thinks we're crazy. So I'm going to start by just kind of getting into what does it mean. And I don't mean like what does dumb mean, but what does entrepreneur mean? Uh, you know, I went to just, you know, looked it up, you know, Google and uh, what Webster would say. And does this ring true to, to what most people's definitions are at the moment, right? You know, something about starting, something about organizing. I don't organize. I'm not organized. Uh, operating, I don't enjoy operating. Uh, let's see, business, I'm not a really good business person either. Um, got Brian going to help me out with that in a, in a few weeks, right? So uh, greater than normal financial risks. Um, what's normal? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, willing to risk. Well, actually, I'd rather not <laughs> risk, but okay, so this is what they say after taking a look at all the stuff that's out there. But a really good definition that I got was from a place from, uh, called Harvard. You might have heard of it. They get it right sometimes. And there's nothing I would take away from that or add to it. You know, pursuing. And that's what we do, right? We're pursuing. We're pursuing opportunities, whatever you want to call it, whether it's, some people call it a business. I don't always call it a business, right? It could be just something you're pursuing. And it's beyond resources controlled. I mean, is that even English? Beyond resources controlled, okay? I actually take it and I break it down into three words, right? For, from, the, from the beginning, and I focus on you, obviously, right? So the square peg in the round world that we have. I start by saying that, first of all, we are unique, right? Definitely, right? So yeah, we're out there, we're rebellious, we're disruptive. You know, stay inside the box, they say, right? Um, some of my favorite quotes along the way. But this is the part where I agree with Harvard and I bring it down to two words. One is curious, right? And, you know, they keep asking you why. And I say, so you're asking why too much. I said, yeah, sure, okay, then uh, why not, right? Why not ask why? And, uh, and they say, you know, for when it comes down to uh, boredom, right? The cure for boredom is curiosity. But there is no cure for curiosity. Once we're curious, we're curious. And, and then this is the part beyond resources controlled. We're just unrealistic, right? We've heard words like, you know, it's impossible. We're told it's impossible, can't be done. We're dreaming, we're naive. And I got to say, that word naive probably strikes me more than anything else. I'm maybe the most naive entrepreneur I have ever met. And it's just one thing after the other, just stumbling my way forward. It's because of this naivety. Have you ever heard that story of the mosquito, the baby mosquito that went for its first flight? Ever heard of it? Came home. Dad's like that dad from Finding Nemo, right? Like anxious, paranoid, sees his son coming home, and he's like, oh, just got in. And the father's like, where you been? Where you been? He's like, oh, I just went for my first flight, right? And dad's like, oh, my God, you went for your first flight. Did, did you know what happened? Oh, my God, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm fine. Guess what, Dad? Yeah, what? I saw humans. Oh, my God, you saw humans. Yeah, I saw humans. As long as they didn't see you. Actually, Dad, they saw me. And they loved me. And they were cheering me on. As I was flying, they were just applauding for me. It was fantastic. Just naive. Just didn't get what was going on. Some people figure, you know, manage your fears. But my problem has been I wasn't even aware that the fear existed in the first place. And that was probably the greatest blessing of all. So that's one thing I'll share with you. They talk about willing to take risks. I just never saw the risk, Brian. I just stumble forward every single time. So, okay, here we go, Caterpillar, right? It all starts way back in grade two. It was actually grade one. Uh, I'd, I'd moved here uh, from Africa. Uh, I was in an Indian school, an Indian embassy school, as they call it. And back then, they'd give you a test to decide, are you going to grade one or are you going to grade two? And what they tested me on was math, <laughs> the only thing we study in Indian schools. So I was like, uh, OK. I took the test. And uh, then they gave me a choice. I said, actually, you're actually good enough to go to grade two, not grade one. So choice, do you want grade one or do you want grade two? So I go to grade two. I say, yeah, fine. But here's the thing when I walked into grade two, it just never felt right from the beginning. Like I'm a very, it's all to me about vibe. It's all about to me energy. Like I'll meet you in one second and I'll say, I like your smile. That's it. We're done, right? So to me, it's all about judging them by their smiles. And I use it till today, judging them by their smiles. And I walked in, and the teacher was not smiling. I did not belong there. And I, like, right away, I felt like, and then she told us to sit in a circle, inside a circle. And I just didn't feel like going. 
So as I was kind of walking over there slowly one day, she says, you know, if you don't get here fast enough, I'm going to send you to the corner. I was like, she's going to send me to the corner? Is that like an offer? <laughs> and she's like, do you want to go to the corner? And I was like, yeah, I want to go to the corner. She's like, get to the corner. So I, I went to the corner. And I was sitting there just dreaming away, you know, planning what I was going to do with my figurines when I got home. And then she turned back after like 10 minutes, felt like 10 seconds. And she goes, do you still want to stay in the corner or do you want to come to the circle? And I was like, I want to stay in the corner. She goes, then fine, stay in the corner the whole time, the whole class. I was like, this is great. And I'm sitting there in grade two, um, not understanding, naive, what's going on? And then the best part, grade three, See, my dad used to travel a lot, so my sister, the smarter one of the two of us, uh, brought the report card home and started showing it to everyone, and she was the smarter one, the responsible one. And she said to me, she says, they're putting you in special ed. And I said, special? <laughs> special ed? <laughs> yes, I'm in special ed? And, and she says, yeah, you're in special ed. That's where they put all the dumb students. And I tell you, it was the funnest year I've ever had. I mean, I got to tell you, it was like the class would be given half an hour to write this test. I'd be done in like five minutes, this math test. I'd go up to the teacher, hand in my test. It was a perfect score. And she'd be like, I'd be like, what do I do now? She goes, Muhammad, just <laughs> have some cookies. And I'm like, this is the best class ever. I mean, I want to be in special ed forever. I love special ed. And then broke my heart. They kicked me out of special ed the next year. <laughs> anyway, time goes on, right? So we fast forward to the first time, the first business transaction I ever had. And again, it's just naive. I stumble onto it. I used to get allowance. I'd keep some money, you know, in my pocket for lunch or whatever. And one fine day, everyone's bigger than me. This big, huge guy comes up to me and he says, he sees me my, with my wallet. He goes, it's like, look at me, he goes, how much money you got? And I'm like, uh, I got 10. He goes, I'll take the $10. And this happened to me a lot, actually. So I was like, oh. <laughs> so I was like, uh, OK, here's your $10. He goes, I'll bring you 20 tomorrow. And he walked away. And I was like, really? That's interesting. And when he brought his 20, the next day I went out and I found this guy again. I was like, hey, you need $10? And that was my first business transaction. I was like, 100% return. I was like, 10 to 20? This is amazing. You know, when we moved to Markham from Flemington Park, I, was, I had a lawn and I had to cut the lawn. So I used to love cutting grass. I don't know what it was. Just cutting the grass, the lines, you know, shading them this way. Sometimes I'd cut diagonally. And then one day I'm just standing there, just loving my work, right? Standing there in front of my, my lawn. I'm like, man, this is good. And this, this neighbor comes up to me and he says, hey, kid, yeah. You want to cut my grass? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to cut your grass. He goes, I'll give you 25 bucks. I go, oh my God, he's going to pay me on top of this. I mean, this is amazing. And I was like, and I looked around, and I was like, look at all these lawns. <laughs> this is amazing. So I just went knocking on doors, just like what they were talking about earlier on. I was like, hey, would you like your lawn cut, by the way? And he's like, how much? I was like, 25? He's like, 20. I was like, deal. And as I could go to the next guy, 20? He'd be like, 10. I'm like, deal. As long as I got to cut grass, I was happy. The money was just like this bonus. I couldn't get a job. All of these other friends of mine were working in the mall. I didn't even know what a resume was. I didn't know how to write one up. But there I was. I was making twice as much as they were working the weekend while they were slogging it over the weeknights. So that was my first job. I mean, my first company anyway, or my first companies. But then came my first job. And this is when I realized that like so many of these amazing people realized I just wasn't meant for this. Because now they were telling me when to show up. <laughs> they were telling me how long I had to stay and when I could leave and how to do it. I got in a lot of trouble working at the bank uh, because when people would come up to my, my wicket, back in those days we had wickets. Uh, don't want to give away the age quite yet. So I'd say, hey, you know, like, you're paying all these service charges? Yeah, you know, like, if you pay for this plan, like, all these service charges, they, like, go away. You're saving, like, 100 bucks a month. The guy's like, really? Nobody ever told me this before. Simple stuff, right? 
I'd be like, yeah, and you know, this, all this money that you're keeping here, you should just invest it into this because you'd be like making five times as much, the GIC. He's like, oh, yeah, well, thanks. You know, and I go, you see how it says 5% on the board there? Yeah, I'll give you five and a quarter. And he's like, great. Like, so he'd sign up for his GIC, he'd walk away, and then my manager would come up to me and goes, what are you doing? I'd be like, what do you mean, what am I doing? I just saved this guy a ton of money. I gave him five and a quarter. I mean, he's really happy. He says, why'd you give him five and a quarter? I'd say, because I couldn't give him five and a half. <laughs> I mean, only you're allowed to do that. I said, but why'd you give him five and a quarter? He never asked for it. And I just did not understand. How is it that you don't put your best foot forward every single time? And how is it when I do, I got in trouble for it? I said, well, did you not notice? He just came back and brought another two people, right? But they want five and a quarter now. But that's great because you're willing to go up to five and a half. So I'd introduce him to the manager. I'd be like, <laughs> didn't last very long. <laughs> Mondays were like, oh, can you believe there are people who live life that like on Monday, they just don't want to get out of bed? There's such a thing. And then at five o'clock, they just can't wait to get out. And they actually celebrate Fridays. And I can't believe it. There's like a whole world of these people out there. And I was like, oh my God, Fridays? I mean, Mondays are the days to celebrate. In fact, when people ask me, how's your weekend? I'd be like, I'm almost on my weekend. I mean, you're given seven days, right? Why have just two good ones? And what that led to was the next business, actually. Um, I started selling computers. And that's what led to my next move. Selling computers, uh, my father had a friend in New York, whatever, he'd bring the computers over, I'd sell it, blah, blah, blah. And from the profits, I'd pay him his, you know, his what I borrowed from him, and I kept a little. But that little that I kept actually paid my way through university. And when the time came, that company that was in New York called me and said, hey, would you like to come and join us? We're moving from New York to Florida. <laughs> so I was like, did you just say Florida? And it's like, yeah, we're going to Florida. All right, I'm in. I just got married and I was like, my wife, that's the amazing thing about my wife. It was never like, what's the plan? It was never like, how much money are we gonna make? That's the amazing thing about my wife. And sometimes crazy people like us, we just need like, like just go along with it or just shut us down quick. But I just said, Florida, sun, beach, let's just go, we'll figure it out, right? What was the plan? There was no plan, you know? I know a lot of people talk about plan, 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 plan. And I gotta say, there's a lot of truth to it. There is a lot of truth to it, but this was version 1.0, right? So I just went with it. Uh, for starters, where are we gonna live? Well, my boss gave me his house in New York, which happened to be about 10,000 square feet, plus or minus. I was like, okay, that'll do, right? And the car, he gave us a car. He said, just drive this car down to Florida when you're done wrapping up here in New York. That's how we started. We went from a $30 million a year sale company all the way to like 300 million. And what was amazing was, I never asked once, how much am I gonna get paid? In fact, I was ready to start negotiating. I had it all worked out. And my dad gave me the best advice ever. I mean, it was his friend who owned the company. He said, just shut up and work. Don't say anything. Just get to work. And these guys, they taught me what work was. These are New Yorkers. So they, everybody in this company started from nine, finished at seven. Seven, not five. And they worked hard. And so I said, okay, if that's what they're gonna do, I'll start at 8.30 and I'll finish at 7.30. And I just outworked it. Because I didn't have the skill, I didn't have the talent, I didn't have anything else, but I could do that. And within about a year, I was sitting with the executives on Saturdays at their meetings. And then they said, Junior kind of got worried because the old man was starting to treat me like a son. So <laughs> he was like, hey, why don't you just start your own company? <laughs> and maybe we'll even fund you. I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> It's always been, yeah, sure. Lucas is like, you want to do something? Yeah, sure. Let's just do it, right? The question is, are we having fun, right? So he, that's all he said to me. He says, it's going to be all yours. I was like, all oh, mine. This is good. And you get to travel. I was like, okay, good. All right, let's do it. I'm in. And the old man said to me, he goes, you realize what's happening, right? And I said, yeah, but you know what? I just don't want to be a threat to anybody's inheritance. Like, you know, if it's time for me to go, as they say, you gotta know when you're being handed your hat, right? So I, ha I took my hat and I walked out, but I did not consider that I had just bought a house, yeah, and we were expecting our first. But you know what, let's just see what happens. We went with it, 
Uh, this was an IT company, by the way, in 1999, <laughs> right? So I was like, okay, market tanks. So when our sales went down from four million down to like two and a half, two million, at least we were still making money. And there were days, it was really tough. I mean, I was afraid to actually pick up the phone and make a long distance call. Back in those days, the long distance calls actually costed something. Um, so, you know, I called a friend of mine out in Boston just to talk to him. He was like my, one of my mentors and he said to me, you know, are your doors still open? And that's all that mattered that day, that my doors were still open. I don't know, I just said, okay, well, let's keep going. And we got through it and we said, hey, let's go expand. And then I made my second big mistake, right? <laughs> so it wasn't a $30,000 loss anymore, it was 120, right? Now it was a whole bunch of receivables, right? I was just giving people product because they said they would pay for it. <laughs> yeah, right, naive, right? So I learned that lesson. But as I expanded over here to Canada, I came to my 3.0. <laughs> Guess where I opened up our Canadian branch office? In a virtual office, right? Which is what SkyTech is today. And that's what we have going on. So I came in here and I thought, I'm spending 50 grand a year on rent, just on rent in a warehouse. If you've had a warehouse, you know, right? So 50,000 a year. I was like, well, for 50,000 a year, that's my alternative. Here I'm paying 20,000 a year, I get the corner office, and that receptionist that costs 40 grand a year is also rolled in, where do I sign? Didn't even think about it, just signed. Just let's go, right? It made sense on paper. So that's where I landed, and when I wanted to start my own, it just, I was like, this is a great idea. Nobody's doing this. Turns out, actually, a lot of people are doing it. <laughs> and not only that, since then, the 10 years ago that we started, a lot more people are doing it. Didn't factor that in. Uh, but here are the other things I didn't see coming. So $120,000 loss, ah, no big deal, <laughs> right? Lost over about half a million dollars just in cash flow shortages. Um, had a landlord that ditched, oh, I was in a sublease. I didn't know what that actually meant. So when the other guy files chapter whatever, <laughs> right, they take your deposit and now you gotta put in another deposit, right? Oh, and then our phone system, yeah, got hacked and they ran up a bill. And this is what I say now, what brought us to our knees actually raised us to new heights. Because every time we fell down on something, we innovated. And when we got a new phone system, and I created a new phone system, it saved me about five grand a month, or sorry, 50 grand a year. That was about eight years ago, 400,000, right? For a lesson that cost me 70. So you know, when you look at it over and over again, there were mistakes that we made, repeatedly making mistakes. And now we finally said, okay, instead of the, uh, the ready, fire, aim thing, let's try this a little bit differently now. We actually start by saying, actually, from day one, our clients actually call us and say, hey, how do we, we have this problem, how are you gonna solve it? We, our, our, our other alternatives are driving us crazy. And I said, okay, well, just take a couple of points. This is what I would do. And I was actually on my way to, to golf that day, and I said, yeah, this is what I would do. He said, can you give me like five points on an email? I was like, yeah, I'll shoot it over real quick. Three weeks later, I know I told you the story once, Brian. He calls me back, he goes, you know what we talked about? Yeah, he says, it got board approval. I said, what do you mean it got board approval? He says, yeah, we're on, they wanna start documentation. I said, documentation, it's not even a product. <laughs> it's just an idea, <laughs> right? Oh, but by the way, if I was gonna do that, here's what I would really do. And so we didn't just aim at it once, we aimed at it repeatedly and we perfected the idea. And we say, we're not just gonna make money on day one, we gotta make this thing like really do well. And then he went from saying, well, now I don't wanna be a customer. I was like, why, what's the problem? He goes, I wanna be an investor. <laughs> he said, the only way I'll be a customer is if you let me be an investor in this idea. So that's, those are the lessons that we learned and, and now we just go after it and we go after it really, really hard. And when you focus in and away you go and you, you bring in some good talent, like people who are gonna be able to help you see the way, all the things that you've already heard. But I just wanted to say that, you know, if the dumbest entrepreneur out there can make it, <laughs> and is not just uh, surviving, but thriving and having a lot of fun, then whatever idea that you're working on, right, my dear mosquitoes, <laughs> go out there, fly, and not only will I applaud you, <laughs> but so <laughs> will the world. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening.